The Coombs method for voting is just like the plurality with elimination method, except that in each round, we eliminate the candidate with the largest number of last place votes instead of the one with fewest first place votes. A math club is holding elections for president. The four candidates are our candidates A, B, C, and D. The outcome of the votes is shown in the table. Find the winner of the math club election using the Coombs method. Choose the correct answer. We are going to start by adding up all of the voters so that we know the total number of voters that we're working with. We have 14 plus 10, which is 24, plus 8, 32, plus 4, 36, plus 1, 37. So we have a total of 37 voters. Okay, now from that, if we divide 37 in half, we would get 18.5, but of course we can't have 0.5 people. So that will not give us what our majority is. Therefore, we're gonna actually round up to the nearest whole number, which will give us 19 as our majority. So when looking at the preference ballots for each voter, in order for us to determine whether or not a candidate has plurality, we want to see the candidate that has majority. If we can look at the schedule or at the preference ballots and see one of the voters with a majority, then we would be able to identify the winner. But if we don't have a majority, then we're gonna have to go through the process that we're using for the Coombs method. So since 19 is the majority, I see that I have 14 here, 10, eight, four, one, and let's actually write that out to see what we have. So for A, we have 14. For B, we have 11, 10 plus one. And then for C, we have four. D, we have eight. To check yourself, you always wanna add them up just to make sure that you have the correct number of voters. So I have four plus eight, which is 12. And then 12 plus 11 will give me 23. 23 plus 14 will give me my 37, so we're good. Now, none of these are 19, therefore we do not have a majority and we're gonna have to go through the Coombs process. So again, the Coombs process is very close to plurality with elimination, except for it goes in the opposite direction. We're going to delete the candidate with the largest number of last place votes. So let's go ahead and get started. Last place votes would be fourth. So D has 14. Then I notice that A takes all of the other numbers. Since there are 37 voters, we should automatically know that 23 votes, last place votes go to A. So that means that we are now going to delete A. After we delete A, here, this would have been our first choice. Instead of being able to vote for our first choice, we're now going to have to move to our second choice and give all of the votes from A to our second choice, which is C. So that shifts the entire row up and gets rid of the entire fourth row. So now we have gotten rid of everything that has A. So all of our A's are gone. And after we get rid of the A's, we shift everything up to get this new table. Again, all of the votes that originally went to A, we're now gonna move to our second choice, which is C. So B stays the same as 11, but now C has four plus the 14 that came from A. So C is now at 18 and D is still at eight. So eight plus 18, 26 plus 11 is 37. Still, our majority number should be 19 since none of these are 19, we're gonna have to keep moving. So looking at our ballots again, 
with our preference ballots, we see that, and let's go ahead and write it out. So the numbers that we're looking at are B, C, and D. For B, we said we have 11. For C, we have 14 plus four, which is 18. And then for D, we have our eight. And I just wanted you to see where all the numbers were coming from. Since we do not have plurality or a majority, we're gonna have to go through the process again. Looking at the last row, for D, we have 14 plus 10, which is 24. Here we would have eight and four and one. So C would have been nine and then B is four. Since D has 24 last place, I'm going to put last place votes D will be the next to leave so we're going to get rid of D but since we're getting rid of D D here was the first place since we no longer have the option of voting for D all of our votes that would have gone to D as first place will now go to B. So we're looking at B and C. C stays the same, but now B will be 11 plus the eight that came from D, which gives us 19. And at this point, deleting all of our rows that include D and actually the third row and everything that has D and shifting everything up we have C B B C B C C B B C so everything should match up C would be 14 plus 4 would be 18 whereas B is 10 plus 8 18 plus 1 19 since 19 is our majority or a plurality has been reached. So by Kuhn's method, B is the winner.